Okay, Michael, we're ready to roll. Okay, members of media, thank you for joining us for this afternoon for today's um, Zoom call with Mountaineer coach Bob Huggins. Please use the raised hand feature and we'll get your questions in. We're ready for questions and we will start, Coach Huggins, we will start with Greg Hunter. So coach, just the, uh, how's the trip so far? Uh, last we talked to you, you're in Austin, now in Fort Worth. So give us a, a synopsis of the trip and then your thoughts on TCU. Uh, trip was good. Trip, trip was good. It went and obviously made it a whole lot better. Uh, we bust what, three and a half hours or so, three and a half, four hours up, up to uh, Fort Worth and had a little workout yesterday. Didn't, didn't go real hard. Uh, but we kind of just went through their stuff and, and, and what we wanted to do. And we're going to go a little bit harder today for a little bit longer and then get ready to play tomorrow. Fort Worth's a great town, by the way, Greg. <laughs> Good town. I've been there. It, it is nice. Our next question is from John Antoni. Hey, uh, Coach. Um, uh, looking at the scores from TCU, uh, are you anticipating them trying to slow it down and and try to play more possession um, uh, the way they're playing right now? No, I don't think so. That's not that's not really Jamie's style. Yeah. I mean, he did that at Pitt a little bit, but I don't think so. I mean, if you look at look at their prior games, they'll they'll run it up and down. What do you see from them? Um, what what's um what are some things that jump out at you with them? Well, I think their youth, their 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 youth is is one thing that kind of jumps out. Uh, they've been in a lot of close games, and you know it's you'd rather have veterans than young guys. Samuels has been really good for them, and they're they're uh, they really shoot the ball uh, at times. They're 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 a bit streaky, but they're they're young guys. The guys that Jamie brought in can can really get it going, and when they get it going, they just spread you so far that it's hard. They're hard to guard. And and them hard. Uh, he's a guy I remember. What are you seeing from him? He's playing really well. Playing really well. I think I think the thing that uh, we've got to be prepared for is how hard he runs the floor. He really runs the floor, which um, kind of stretches everything out, gives gives the other guys a little more space to penetrate and kick. And they're 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 big penetrating kick guys. And a little bigger guard uh, is that issues there? Well, he's a little bigger. Yeah, O'Bannon's a little bigger. I mean, yeah. I don't know what O'Bannon is, whether he's a forward or a guard, but he he plays on the perimeter. They've got really good size on the perimeter. Back to Greg Hunter. Bob, you talked about this the other day, but, you know, you could end up playing seven games in a two-week span. So how do you adjust practice accordingly? Uh, you got to save legs. So how much do you cut back? Who said you have to save legs? <laughs> They play 100 games in the NBA. I tell our guys that all the time. You guys are tired, and in, in the NBA, you're you're maybe one eighth of the way through your season. Um, now we we didn't. We got some shots up yesterday, and we kind of dummy through, walk through, just to start to familiarize them a little bit with with what TCU does. Watch some film with them back at the hotel, and and. Uh, we're going to go, a, we have to go a little longer today to just to get in everything that we want to get in. Chris Anderson. Chris, you're on mute. Hey, coach. We saw in the uh, Texas game the, the little altercation in the huddle between Jones and Ramey. Um, over your coaching career, I'm assuming that something similar like that has happened uh, with between your players. What's your reaction to that? How do you handle that? Tell them to stop. <laughs> what are you going to do? Tell them, tell them, tell them to stop. Go sit down. Set one of them away from the other one and continue the game. You, you certainly can't screw the game up because guys kind of get a little emotional. John Antoni. Hey, um, I know the, 
the, the travel, the, the, the three games in six days and all of that being on the road, is there some benefit maybe to being together and just having them together all the time? Well, John, first of all, really, you don't get it because you don't have to do it. Um, it it's rough, man. I mean, it, it's uh, you put your head down on a pillow and then the next day, you you know, you're in a different place. You wake up and you look around, you wonder what hotel room you're in. Um, it, it's, it's, it's something that we have to go through that other people really don't go through, you know, and they don't, some of those guys, some of the coaches understand, some of them don't. Um, this was, this, this, the, the two days in between, I think were, were good for us because they could, they could look at film, they could look at film of their own, their own, you know, that things that they could do better and they could look at their opponent. Um, we just, you know, kind of just on the surface of what we need to do uh, in the game tomorrow night, yesterday, because I just didn't want to, you know, I promised them, you know, we're only going to go, we'll, we'll, we'll be in and out of there in an hour. And we were. And, uh, and then, of course, went back and, and watched some film after we ate. But... John, it's hard, man. It's harder than it's harder than 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 any of y'all realize. I mean, I get that part about not sleeping in your own bed and, and all of that, but it is with you guys all together. It is all basketball or academics, so it is all business while you're with them. Well, John, if you were six eight and you played 30, 33 minutes, you went and got a shower, you went out, you sat in a bus where you can't really stretch your legs out, you know. Then you get out of the you get out of the bus and you go and the coaches are like, uh, you know, come on, we're gonna have something to eat and watch some film. You're like, come on, man. Especially, you know, it's just it's hard. It, it it's harder than anybody realized. We're gonna play tomorrow night. We're play tomorrow night. We'll get back at three, maybe. Something like that, you know. So it's hard. you keep an eye on their energy level early. Try to. Yeah try to i'm obviously not an expert you kind of did that in a texas game though you played some guys that you normally didn't play maybe that was because you weren't happy with what you were getting on the floor but was that part of it too no it was a combination of a lot of things okay and and you know Derek got Derek got a couple early one early ones and you know we've got to have him to to, to rebound the ball at the end of games next question from cody nesper Hey, Coach. Um, I, I believe this is going to be either your 19th or your 20th time coaching against Jamie. And I was just wondering, what's it like to coach against a guy that you have a decade plus of history with? I don't know. I don't really think about it. You know, I, I, I look at what they're doing. Jamie's, Jamie doesn't isn't playing the way uh, he played at Pitt here. They're, they're playing a lot faster. He was uh, – he was more kind of more of a half court guy at Pitt, but personnel dictated, you know, I mean, he's like all the rest of us. You're, you try to accentuate the positive and stay away from the negative. And he's got a bunch of young guys who can really run. Uh, they're, they're similar to playing like maybe Oklahoma State because Oklahoma State really, really runs. These guys really run. Transition is going to be huge for us which was, again, a, a reason why, you know, yesterday we just, we didn't do very much. Justin Jackson. Coach, you mentioned uh, Samuel earlier, and obviously uh, he, he's a big rebounder for him. And you know, I think he's like, what, 6'11", 260 or something like that. Uh, I mean, there are obviously other big guys uh, in the Big 12 that, that Derek matches up with. I mean, you know, McCormick at Kansas comes to mind and, you know, Sims at Texas is a pretty big boy, but is is this maybe the uh, a more physical uh, matchup for for Derek more so than maybe uh, um, you know skill set wise? I honestly don't remember uh, it being that physical. Okay. Um, I think I think McCormick is is a lot more physical. I, you know, there's, I think, I think Sims has kind of learned to be, he wasn't early on in his career. I think he's getting a lot more physical. Uh, 
take a look at the last play of the game and and you I think Neil would be happy to have any of those guys blocking for his running backs. Uh, I mean, you talk about physical now. They were they were clamping onto arms, trying to run over people. It was it was a, it was a scrum. Coach, we have our next question from uh, Bob Herzl, and uh, we have a series of questions. They're all on the same subject. So we will uh, stick with his questions here for the next two or three, and then we'll turn it back over to the raised hands. But this is from uh, Bob. Coach, the other day you mentioned that Texas Tech's Chris Beard was ahead of the curve going after junior college players. But it seems you started doing that 30 years ago at Cincinnati, long before it was popular. What made you start going in that direction with the likes of Corey Blanc, uh, Eric Martin, and Nick Van Exel? Well, if I said junior college guys, I, I, I wasn't speaking solely of junior college guys with Chris. Chris has done a, gr a great job of scanning the portal and taking transfers. Um, not necessarily uh, all, he has taken some junior college transfers as well, but I think he's done a great job of, of just taking guys from the portal. And then, you know, with what went on this year with the automatic waiver and, and everybody being eligible when they transfer and in the future, everyone's going to be eligible. I think that, that Chris is, is ahead of the curve there. I started recruiting junior college guys at Cincinnati because I couldn't get any high school guys. Um, I mean, we tried like crazy to recruit some high school guys and couldn't get any. And I had a, I had a, a, a buddy who was worked a lot of camps with me when uh, when I was younger that said there's these three guys out here that you want to take a look at and he and he sent me their names and and so forth and I had a guy Steve Muller who recruited uh, California he was at Bakersfield as an assistant he went and he was at Texas as an assistant he had recruited California so I said go out there and take a look and see what you think and then let me know and he went out he said he said, these guys are, these guys can really, really come in and help us. So, so I got on a plane and went out and, and, uh, we brought them in and of course they were, you know, you have dinner down there on the river. It's, it's pretty impressive looking at the city across the river. And, um, the one guy said, Terry Nelson said, he said, Coach, I love it here, man. This is unbelievable. I want to be a comedian. I want to be a stand-up comedian. If, 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 if there was a comedian in here that you could introduce me to, he said, I'd sign right now. So I went over to Jeff Ruby, who, who it was his restaurant. I said, can you call Ray Combs and get him down here? And so he called Ray Combs. Ray Combs came in, and he was doing, I think, Family Feud and that at that time. I said, Terry, you know who that guy is? He said, that's Ray Combs. I said, yeah, and I didn't, I didn't have to say so Terry jumped up, went over and introduced himself, told me he wanted to be a comedian, uh, which he's been everything, but by the way, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's how it started. And then, and then we got, we got Herb Jones. Herb's probably really where it started. Herb's probably the best player I, I had at, at Cincinnati other than Kenya. Um, and Corey Blunt had a great career. Van Exel had a great career, obviously. Van Exel wasn't a California guy, though. We got Nick out of Texas. Coach, how different is it with JC players? Are there a lot of habits to break? No, you know what it is, what it is. I mean, they the guys will do what what you demand that they do. And no, I I love coaching those guys. Uh, they were they were a little bit more mature. They you know they. They had already uh, kind of seen the world a little bit, a little bit more than what a high school kid would. And physically, they're they're so much more ready to play. And and the ones I had were great. I mean, I I uh, I probably I probably had I don't know fifteen to twenty of them that that went on and had great careers after they left us. Continuing with our final two questions from Bob Herzl. Uh, Coach Huggins, what do you look for in JC players? 
Well, obviously, guys that can play. You know, everybody wants you to say, you know, you look at their academics. Well, you, they got to be able to play, or why would you fool with their academics? So you look at how, at, at how and how you think they'll fit in, you know, what your needs are. And then, of course, then you go to the academic piece of it and make sure that they're guys that uh, that are capable of, of handling uh, the work that you have at, at a university setting and um, whether they're willing to do the work. Our final question from Bob is, uh, why do you believe you have been so successful with JC players over the years? Well, I think I relate to them well. Um, you know, they're, they, they've seen a lot more than, than a guy coming out of high school. And, uh, I think you put the time in, you know, you put the time in to get to know them, you put the time in to see you know, where they're coming from, you listen to them. But, you know, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is you coach them. Guy, guys really deep down in want coach. They act like they don't, but they really do want coach. Okay, back to the raised hand feature, Chris Anderson. Sorry, my question was already answered. A uh, hand just didn't go down. John Antoni. Um, getting back to Samuel, he, he's a, uh, got 39 shot blocks. How do you attack a shot blocker? And is he getting his blocks with guys going into him or is he getting them away from the ball weak side? What do you do there with him? Well, you attack a shot blocker. I think the, the best way is to, is to get contact with him. You get contact with him, you kind of you keep them grounded. And the, the worst thing to do is give them space to where they can they can use that to get a step and jump. And, and then I think they bother you so much more that way than they do uh, if if you if you have contact with them. I think that's why that's why Derek's been successful. I think playing against other bigs because he can handle the contact. And I guess spacing helps if you're if you're if you're. If you're the lane's clogged up. It makes it more difficult or easier. It's way more difficult. Yeah. You can't bounce it. You can't bounce it. You gotta. You gotta really secure the ball. You got people digging down on you uh, from from a lot of angles. So playing out would help Derek against a shot blocker. Uh, us spreading the floor helps Derek more than anything. If we can get him spread. They're still going to run in and help. Derek never sees a one on one matchup. Okay. Our final question comes from Keenan Cummings. Hey, Bob. Obviously, winning on the road in this league is difficult. Uh, what has been the difference for you all this year? I mean, is it part of, you know, no fans in the arena? Is it just a change in mindset? And what's helped you guys to this five or two start on the road? Well, you know, in terms of the fan deal, they had they had crowd noise that was really loud, um, really really loud. To uh, so it wasn't it wasn't the sterile environment that you you might imagine. It was there was a lot of noise. Um, I, I think maturity. You know, we've got some guys that have been through it before, and and those guys know you know, what we have to do on the road, the preparation, uh, you know, that you're, you're more apt to have comebacks from home teams on the road than you are vice versa because, of the, because they're so comfortable. Uh, we, have, we have one more question here from Justin Jackson. Sorry about that. Um, Coach, uh, you guys moved back up into the top 10 today. And, you know, obviously, you know, I'm kind of thinking of you know, this road trip that you guys are going to go on. And then, you know, obviously, even after that's over, uh, you guys are going to come back home and, and play another stretch of games in a short amount of days. Do you think the uh, selection committee will, will take that stuff? Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll 
they'll know about that. They'll consider that when it comes to figuring out the seating, the, uh, the stuff that you guys have had to go through this year. Well, they never have. I, I would doubt it. Um, I, I think, I think, uh, actually I was on the committee, um, to, to find a better way to do it, uh, than RPI and, people came up with with what we have now were basically Ivy League people. Um, you know, and we just as coaches tried to say, you know, why would you, why would that carry this much weight or why would that not carry some weight and tried to, to tweak it as best we possibly could. But um, I think it, I think it's going to more depend on the net than it is anything. I, Although I'm told I've, I've never been on a selection committee, obviously, but I'm told from people that have been on a selection committee that a lot of it is just eyeballing them that those guys actually do towards the, the end of the year, they actually do watch a ton of games. And so they have a, they, they have an idea of how good they think people are based on um, them watching the games as, as well as, as well as the net. Uh, but I, there's no, there's no, as hard as we've tried, there's no perfect answer. Yeah. yeah I mean, that, I, mean I, I think the net's a, a pretty good tool, but, but the net doesn't take into account, you know, you guys possibly playing, you know, whatever it's going to be, eight games in 10 days or nine games, you know, you know, whatever that measure is, that's not going to be represented well, in, in the net. No, it won't be, but, but, that's supposed to be part of the eyeball test that committee members are supposed to be aware of the fact that but what they're not aware of though, Justin, honestly, is getting back at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning, you know, going from there over to study hall, doing their classwork and then come in and, you know, basically what we do is, is kind of look at film and spend a lot of time looking at film, trying to keep them awake rather than, have them out running up and down on the floor. Cause I, I mean, I know how tired I am when we get back and I can imagine how tired they are. So, th th I mean, there's, it, it's never going to be perfect. There, there's, there's too many things involved for it to be perfect, but you know, I, I think it's, you know, although uh, you guys ought to talk to Josh cause Josh is really good at it. And, and, you weren't supposed to get all this credit that people are getting for playing, uh, whatever, what's it called? Tier four teams, you know, the, the, the real low major teams and beating them by, you know, 40, 45. And actually what we were supposed to do was kind of eliminate that from the net. And I think what it's, what the way it turned out, I think you're getting a lot of credit for, for beating people bad, which was, not what we set out to do. Okay, coach, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate You're welcome. it. Members of the media, just a reminder for the Kansas State game on uh, Saturday, your credential requests are due in by 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, sign into the sports systems uh, website to request your credentials by 4 p.m. on Wednesday. That concludes our session for today. Thank you all.